So now we're looking at a late 18th century scholar's studio um, that was brought to the museum from the area around Suzhou. And the scholar's studio is a space um, that um, was an, an incredibly important space for upper class men. What scholars did in their studio is they read, they wrote, they studied, they painted. It's supposed to be by and large a place where lettered men, educated men are going to escape to, right? Um, the particular uh, scholar studio we have here at the Minneapolis Institute of Arts is a two-story structure, mm -hmm. which has the, the studio um, looking out on a, on a garden. This is a, a mid to late Qing construction, yep. and um, you know, a lot of wood, stone floor. You've got a nice little daybed in case you've been reading too much and of the Confucian Analects and you've been put to sleep by it, or maybe you just need to rest while well, you've been practicing your calligraphy. But then you have your, your table where you would be doing your calligraphy, to perhaps getting together with friends to do some calligraphy together, drink a little. On the one side, you'd have a cabinet, which uh, is designed to keep cats out. And then on the other side, you have uh, a shelving unit with a number of sort of precious objects. One of the things that the scholars are up to at this time is um, also sort of displaying, kind of like the women have the cosmetic case, which is their, their thing. The scholar's studio is their world where they're going to show off their love of antiquities, mm -hmm. their love of books, right. their love of scrolls, and their love of sort of um, nature in sort of all its exotic forms. Mm -hmm. So you'll see root sculptures and mm -hmm. brush pots and things made out of unusual pieces of wood, um, nice pieces of ceramics, uh, old you know, bronzes, maybe not so old bronzes, replicas of older bronzes. Um, so all of this shows up along with um, paintings and calligraphy and, and unusual rocks. So it's, a, it's sort of a transitional space. It's not of the house, it is attached mm -hmm. to the house, but it's also attached to the garden. It's this in-between space. Well, in 17th century texts, there's one I'm thinking of where a man is giving instructions to his sons who are young adults, probably in their 20s, and they're married but they are studying for the civil service exams and he gives them a daily routine and a weekly routine and what he says is that they have to he, he gives them their assignments how many essays they have to write how many passages from the analects they have to have memorized every week and he says and you will sleep in the study six nights and you get to sleep with your wife in your own bedroom once a week um, so taking that study seriously we've been talking about you know, that intense pressure. But on the other hand, as you've narrated, the sort of antiquities and, and artworks and there are other cultural practices that made up the educated gentleman that you, you were supposed to cultivate the self, right? That it's not just, you know, memorizing books and learning to write essays, but you had to have a beautiful calligraphic hand. You actually were graded on your calligraphy in the imperial examination system. And then you were supposed to, in Confucian terms, regulate your emotions through art forms. You were expressing your knowledge and refinement through your collecting of old bronze vessels or ceramics or whatever it might be. So these are all practices that are sort of the fun side of, of what how a scholar was supposed to cultivate himself. The gentleman in the studio would have called it self-cultivation and there is, a, there is a lot of there is a lot of discussion about making the proper self and the ways in which it's important in terms of you, you can't govern others if you can't govern yourself.